Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, Pastor Yonker preached that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. I, I got that right. Okay. This parable is the opposite. This parable is a heavenly, a heavenly kingdom that is then manifested on the earth. But if you were just to read it on the surface, you would miss it. Notice, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. All right, so that's, that right there talks specifically about earthly things. But you'll see a transition as we continue through, through the text. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Again, earthly. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the, but the wise took flasks of oil in their lamps. There can be no misunderstanding about these words. Oil is simply faith. Oil is that which you have given over to you, and by sanctification you trim your own lamps. But there are those who have a full measure of faith those who have a half measure of faith and those who have no faith at all. I weep for the last two. For no half measure can be assumed by the bridegroom. That's what we have in the text. Then all the virgins rose up and they trimmed their wicks. And the foolish said to the wise, this is the half measure reaching for the whole, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. So it is in the earthly kingdom. That's why I say you can have no half measure. For if you have a half measure, as you light the lamp, you will surely run out, leaving you no oil, no faith. And there will come a time, I promise you, that we shall rise up and trim our wicks and wait for the bridegroom to come. All of that, once again, is still earthly. But wait for it. Soon there's a heavenly meaning that is brought to earth. But the wise answered, saying, there will, since there will not be enough for us and for you, Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. That's a Hail Mary football. It's a Hail Mary. Hoping, beyond hope, that you can get to the dealer quick enough before the bridegroom comes. But you can't. In other words, you can't buy your faith. You can't work for your faith. It's not your faith. It's Jesus' faith given to you. It, that's why we call it a gift. Your faith is a gift given to you. Those who believe that they can work for a half measure will be in hell. I don't know how else to preach it. So make sure your lamp is full. And you say, Pastor, how is that possible? You just said faith was a gift to God, so what can we do in order to retain the gift. And it's almost as if Jesus made it simple for us. Water to wash. Body and bread to eat. Wine and blood to drink. He gave us the very most simple things in our lives as means of grace to you. So you who come and eat and drink Remember your baptism. You can't have a half measure. 
God doesn't work in fractions. He works in salvation. So come and eat and come and drink. But I'm not done. While they were going out to buy, in other words, when they were going out to try to fill their lamps as a last ditch effort, the bridegroom came. And when the bridegroom came, what did he do? He brought the five virgins who had the right measure of oil. He brought them into the wedding feast. And this right here is where it becomes a heavenly meaning to the earthly people of God. Verse 13 tells us, Christ is speaking to his apostles when he says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. He said that directly to his apostles and disciples. At this point, he's talking to, mostly to his apostles. But what does that mean? Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. If he preached these words to his apostles, what happened to the apostles while they were waiting? They were killed. They were martyred, all except for John, who was given over to the mother of Jesus. So they watched and watched and watched until they died. And Christ did not return to them. Which logically leaves us to this. You are still watching. You are still waiting for the Christ to come. And if we live and die and Christ has not returned, then blessed are we. And yet, we need to raise our children to watch and look for Jesus, the second coming of Christ. Where there can be no half measures. If we live and die and Christ has not come, we live and die and live in Christ, for sure. And yet we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Come, or we pray in the Lord's Prayer to come quickly. Thy kingdom come. Come quickly to us. Let us leave this life of hardship and difficulty. Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest. That's not merely a table prayer. It's an altar prayer. And so, I warn you as Christ has warned you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. But know this, and this is another heavenly meaning for earthly people. The worst thing that can be said to us by Jesus is this. Truly I say to you, I do not know you. So, we lean on Christ for our salvation and our, and our sufficiencies. In fact, we give thanks to Him that we will not hear those words. That's the Christian faith and the whole measure of oil. Simply this. When Christ the bridegroom comes to judge the living and the dead, so likewise, He will, he will send away those with half measures. And to those in whom have faith, he will say this. Come. Come into the marriage feast and I will shut the door. And no one on the outside of the door may enter. Those on the other side of the door, in faith, receive the great banquet, the wedding feast. And I'll give you a little tip for today. We're going to taste a little bit of that feast of the bridegroom. And in that little feast, we don't merely kneel. When we receive the body and blood of Christ, we are communing with all of our dead and all of our loved ones. We are communing with all the company of heaven, which includes angels, archangels, and those in whom we've loved who have passed away. Thanks be to God that we're on the right side of the door. For Christ has made a promise to us. The door is open to us. And yet when He comes, the door will be shut. And you will not think about the door ever again. 
for your eyes will be on Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. And now may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Thank you.